So with Will of the Alpha, we start off with Kandrel again, and uh, and his story, Savage Toys. And what really makes the story work is how Kandrel breaks the stereotypes on dragons and foxes. The mainstream usually views dragons as these horrible, monstrous beasts that just destroy everything in their path. Killing machines, essentially, but the dragon in Savage Toys is more... Uh, sophisticated, if you will. He's civilized, and he behaves a lot like a gentleman. But he still has that sort of uh, hoarding instinct that dragons have, you know, the hoarding all the gold and diamonds and loot and just pretty much everything of value. But in the story, dragons aren't really accepted by society, so he lives off in the mountains in his cave. And he has this fox servant that goes out into the world that buys luxurious items for him. Like really expensive, extravagant things. And the whole concept behind this story is that on the fox's latest expedition, he found this exotic tribe where the men bind up their mates in leather and they gag them and things like that. It's a ritual practice. Now whether this is some sort of mating ritual or it's some sort of way to please their deity, it's not really explained in the story. But in the end, it doesn't really matter anyway. The dragon is like, ooh, something different and exciting. You have to get this for me. I don't care how, but just get it. And naturally, coming from a fox servant, he obliges him. I mean, who would dare deny a dragon his pleasures? That's pretty much asking for a death sentence. And it was at this point that the story took a turn that I wasn't expecting at all. Humphrey, the dragon, wants to experience this culture firsthand. So he has his servant, Rupert, the fox, uh, tie him up and gag him. And all that fun, bondagey stuff. And for the first story, you have an excellent introduction to this anthology. Savage Toys is a prime example of role reversal for species stereotypes within the fandom. Kandrel brilliantly captures that self-empowering feeling of finally being able to dominate over your superior after serving his orders for so long. And it especially deals with how this power can become sort of like a drug. And the story does branch off and it does get more in depth with that concept, but that would be entering the spoiler territory, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. One thing I did find interesting is that even though both of the characters are male, it didn't necessarily feel like it was a homoerotic story. Just an erotic story. Probably because Kandrel didn't put so much effort on making homosexuality out to be some sort of huge taboo. And if an author can write an arousing story regardless of sexual preference, then it's a story worth reading.